pickup truck, an ageless workhorse designed to be used, abused and driven to the ground, then dug back out of the ground and used some more. Aesthetics? Comfort? Those things aren't welcome here, it's a skip on wheels. But not anymore. These days, pickup trucks are getting sexy. Well, sexier. More and more pickup truck manufacturers have been coming out with trucks that have more and more car-like features. Leather interior, fancy infotainment screens, heated seats, Mercedes badges. This is in large part because of a tax, well, loophole that lets business users, such as company car drivers, pay considerably less benefit in kind tax on a pickup truck than they would on a car. A truck is a commercial vehicle and, unlike a car, attracts a flat rate of tax. We've got loads more information in the link below about exactly what this means, but the net result is that it can be a lot cheaper and therefore a more attractive proposition. I wanted to find out what it's like to live with a pickup truck instead of a car as a daily driver, so I've spent the past six months with this magnificent beast. It's a Volkswagen Amarok with lots of kit on it. I spent the past six months before that in a Kia Sportage, link to that video here, I wanted to know what kind of compromises, if any, I'd have to make in a pickup as opposed to an SUV. Here's how I got on. My Amarok is a fairly high spec one. I went for the top end Highline trim, which gives me lots of toys, and I opted for this very stylish Ravenna blue metallic paint because it looks great. Also, it goes very well with chrome. Did I mention the chrome? I decided to splash more than a grand on the chrome styling pack for no other reason than it looks badass. A metallic blue pickup truck isn't exactly subtle, so why not embrace the brashness? It's a double cab, so there are rear seats, more on those in a moment, and then we have the load bed. When I first got the truck, the load bed was open to the elements and, to be honest, I didn't use it much because stuff could get wet and or nicked. So after a month or so, I added a lockable load cover, which has made things much more useful. I can keep the bike rack in there, which mounts to the optional tow bar, and it now means everything I chuck in is both secure and dry. However, while there's more space in here than an SUV boot, it's not as practical in an everyday sense. Because there's a metal floor, stuff slides around. You can't put your shopping in the back because within three corners, your eggs would be omelettes and your fruit would be salad. So aside from really big things, most of my stuff has just gone on the back seat. If I had kids, that might be different. There's plenty of space in here for prams and push chairs and scooters and dirty wellies. Inside, things are utilitarian-ish, but there are enough creature comforts for this to be passable as a passenger car rather than a brick lugger. I've upgraded the infotainment system to the Navigation Tech Pack, which includes a satellite navigation system, although to be honest, I've hardly used it because it also includes Apple CarPlay. And on CarPlay now, you can get Waze, which is, for my money, the best navigation app out there. It also comes with Android Auto, so in terms of smartphone connectivity, it's pretty up to date. Sure, the screen isn't as flashy or large as some of the newer Volkswagen cars, but it's absolutely fine to use, and to be honest, I prefer the physical buttons to the newer touchscreen-only systems. I upgraded the front seats to electrically operated Ergo Comfort numbers, which adjust in 14 different ways and have meant I've got my perfect driving position sorted. There are two good-sized cup holders for the all-important coffee, good-sized door bins, and even a space on the dashboard to store odds and ends. Practicality-wise, it's been great in here. In the back, there's space for three. I don't have kids or many friends, so hardly anyone's been in it. But if I did, they'd be fine, and there are isofix points for the child seats. Right, first things first. The Amarok is a big old beast. It's 5.3 meters long, 2.2 meters wide, which means it's bigger than pretty much any SUV on sale today. It's also 1.8 meters high, which I had to stop and look up before I went into an underground car park because I was scared it didn't fit. It did, but only just. And all this means you have to be quite careful when you're maneuvering through small roads and openings. However, stuff like parking and maneuvering hasn't really been a problem. The steering's nice and light, and there's also parking sensors and a reversing camera for making sure you don't hit anything. Size aside, driving the Amarok is not quite like driving an SUV. Sure, you sit high up and lord it over other road users, but the steering is quite slow, meaning you need a lot more movement to go around corners. It's sort of like driving a bus, but not quite as heavy. The engine in this Amarok is a 3-litre diesel V6 with 224 horsepower, and that's attached to an 8-speed automatic gearbox that has very close ratios. This means that acceleration is really rather perky, although it doesn't half charge through the gears. At 30 miles an hour, you'll already be in fifth. 
Due to the relatively unsophisticated mechanical underpinnings of the Amarok, it doesn't handle quite like an SUV either. If you don't have anything in the load bed pushing down the rear axle, it can feel quite light through the bends, and it also rolls about a bit as well. But that said, it does a perfectly capable job of keeping the worst of the road surface out of the cabin, both in terms of road noise and bumps. I've done plenty of long motorway journeys in the Amarok, and it's been more than acceptable in terms of comfort. I've not had much call to use the Amarok's four-wheel drive skills. This off-road button has remained resolutely unpressed. But I have been down a few gravel tracks and I've used its clambering abilities to park off-road and on one occasion to skip across a section of grass to avoid a traffic jam. Entirely legally, I should add. The prevalence of pickup trucks in the countryside around my house suggests they're very popular with those that need to head into the mud. OK, we need to talk about fuel. Let's start with the good stuff. If you drive a truck on a company car scheme, you could end up paying less tax for personal use fuel than you would if you had a regular car. This is just as well, because you'll likely have to pay a lot more on the fuel itself. The Amarox fuel tank is very big, and it's cost me about £95 a go to go and fill it up. During my six months with the Amarok, I've averaged about 32 miles per gallon, which isn't brilliant. In a large SUV with a diesel engine, I'd be aiming to get at least 40. So, would I recommend using a pickup truck as an alternative to an SUV? Well, sort of. If you're considering it as a company car, then it's certainly worth doing the maths and figuring out if the tax you'll save will offset the rather unimpressive fuel economy. And it's important to realise that this is not an SUV, it's a truck with extra creature comforts, and that brings both good and bad things. I have really enjoyed my time with the Amarok. It stands out on the road, and the small boy in me loves cruising around in basically a life-sized Tonka toy. It's been very handy on occasion to transport big things, but there have been times when I just wanted a regular old boot, and it doesn't drive as well as a regular car. Honestly, the Amarok does a lot of things that I don't really need it to do. It's sort of like having a watch that's waterproof to 200 metres, and all you do is take it in the hot tub. Sure, I'm unlikely to cart a tonne of bricks around a dirty farm, but I do like the idea that I could, if I wanted to. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, we'd really like it if you gave us a thumbs up, and if you commented below to let us know whether you'd rock a pickup truck instead of a normal car. Don't forget, while you're here, to subscribe to the Auto Trader YouTube channel. It's absolutely free, and we've got all sorts of content to help you find your next car.